you know, and I got contacted again by Roseanne Barr's number. So she's like, just puts this message like, hey, Tom, it's Roseanne Barr, exclamation mark. And I'm like, because I had sent her a message. So. All right, we are recording. And I believe we are now live on YouTube. So I'm just going to wait for a confirmation here. Yeah. And we're a little dark today. All right. I was telling Tom just a few minutes ago, uh, forgive me for the moody lighting, <laughs> but like, this is how we have to work with it. Yeah, it's all right. It's kind of, it actually fits. So, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Cause yeah. we're, we got the, the sharp edges ourselves, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I'm getting that feeling too, uh, to be aggressive with the other side now. So we're going to not be lenient. So we're going to actually reveal it all. And uh, I think what they do fear most documentary, they fear most um, court litigation after that, after the public's educated. So we're not going to stop for nothing. Not, not with these. We see the low caliber of persons they are. We're going to bring it down. So, yeah. Yeah. There's really no other way to do it. No. It just that we have to start getting this stuff on the record. And right. um, and on the record too, it's an honor for me. It's an honor of my sons, and for God. So it's like that's not gonna that's not gonna stop. So they know what that means, and they even put it in the films themselves. That if you lose your sons, and you know that's the worst thing you can do. You're gonna expect a response. There will be a response, and we'll take them down. They don't like that phrase. Take them down. They don't like that phrase. Their attorney, Vikram Soulhole. That's just a uh, Bill Gates product. Totally, his uh, law career is totally funded by Bill Gates out of India. Total scumbag. And uh, of um, uh, Nemec and Cole out in California. And that's who Warner Rose turned to to do the real dirty work with Rankin. And when I said the phrase, he's going down, he lost it. He started cursing and just yelling down the halls and everything else. Couldn't handle that. So he doesn't, he doesn't like that phrase. So Vicar Sulcum. You're going down. You can throw your fit in your little house. Can so, you yeah. remind our audience who Victor Silkum is again? He is the guy who um, was brought in. Bill Gates funded his entire education, brought him to California, and has him as a hatchet man in the courts. Um, a firm called Nemec and Cole. Look it up and look at the faces. They're absolute thug scumbags, and they will not follow any due process, whatever. And they'll use everything from intimidation, threat, uh, tags on you. I've got a picture of the tag they put on me um, where they're saying, that's him, that's Alt House. You know, and this guy, they'll lie, cheat, create anything, uh, break all process in order to throw your case. And that's what they brought in for Rankin with a suspended license with his classmate, Linda Burrow from Warner Brothers, being listed as his expert witness along with this other one. So it's interesting that they, they do cover each other just like they were put in place together from Disney. Uh, Mike Lang, Michael. Yeah, and the, these are familiar names to me and to those that, that have watched us before. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. it's all relevant. Like these names are very important to uh, this overall situation. They're they're key players in this, and uh, Tom keeps referring back to them because they are that involved in in all of this. I they mean, don't want to be exposed either. They don't want any attention on media. They don't want to be exposed. We've seen Chilton dancing and making a run for it. We see if you Google Mike Lang, the last real entry of Mike Lang is back with uh, 2012 when we were going forward. And uh, uh, despite all the blocking and he, he resigns from uh, Miramax films and Harvey Weinstein's put in place. And so that's who was put in place when we first submitted in 1993. So you see this where they're trying to stay off the media spotlight which is very unusual for those that are trying to be top in Hollywood. Usually they want all the limelight they can get. Yeah. They're, they're taking a step back from everything. And like, I, I see Keanu in the news again. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think you had mentioned last month, it's more of like, they're, they're giving him his flowers now because he's, it's going to be going away soon. So, I mean, in right. so many words, you didn't say that verbatim, but that yeah. that's the gist of it. Like they're, they're trying to get their last 
moments in the spotlight here. He's kind of also their meat shield. So really, they're going to put him out there. Let's distract the public with him. This uh, creation of ours, you know, that we groomed that was actually a loser and uh, painted to be benevolent. They like to do that. They like to pick people like uh, Wag the Dog and Wag the Dog. They take the guy who was a rapist, a serial rapist, whatever, and they made him the hero. The shoe, the old shoe. That's exactly what they did with Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is not a hero at all. He's actually a scumbag. And they made him into this hero. It's just think of Wag the Dog. They did the same thing. And that's what they like to do. Take people that are just like the Wachowskis into S&M and, you know, Meredith's Dom Matrix. That's who they put forward as the geniuses. It's a way to play back on humanity, reverse out all the order. And uh, so they promote scumbags. It's an inside joke they do. Yeah. Including Kate Chilton, who had nothing, was like we saw, has nothing, no credentials whatsoever, and then promoted immediately for the uh, theft, just like Vicar Shokum. We talked about Vicar Shokum, an attorney with no talent, no class, nothing. He shakes in front of you when he's in front of you. He's just, he's got no courage, nothing. And it was the Bill Gates that found him and made sure that he'd be groomed to be a hatchet person. And he's got that good life now, uh, breaking the law every way he can in uh, the courts. So it, it, Roberts's organization, Pat Roberts' organization was the same thing. They took scumbags and elevated them to top positions. And um, it was weird when they were promoting me, they wanted me to be a scumbag. They wanted me to be that, like be totally dependent on them and have everything just given to me. And I was supposed to be grateful. But if you've got an ounce of intelligence in you, you're not going to go that route. You're going to realize that that is really chaining yourself to the oars. And even if all the flowers and all the gifts coming in, it's not worth it. And so, because I was able to think, um, I had to be disposed of. They, they basically they, they didn't the brainless. Yeah, they didn't succeed though. Mm -hmm. I mean, they. It seems like there is a lot of um, like a like a book of code that they have to go by, like you'd mentioned with the um, the mode of of them murdering uh, mm -hmm. targets is mm -hmm. like through vehicles or uh, mm -hmm. self infliction. Like, like overdoses and stuff like that and um, they have to let you know ahead of time they have to they do it in the films they have to show you the weapon ahead of time they have to let you know from another party that you're going to be attacked on the highway this makes them feel more powerful godlike because they have let you know it's also supposed to put you into a paranoia which doesn't affect me but it's like they will i'm just alerted okay they're going to make a hit and you just change your courses and stuff but the thing is that they want to uh create they want you to say on the air, I'm threatened. And then it's supposed to make you like cappy, whatever, make you look like you're paranoid. Even Michael Jackson uh, was saying that it was going to happen. They let them know it's going to happen. And they make it as if it's a friendly concern your way sometimes. Now, when you get to a certain level, they start to just, the guys just threaten you right out. It says, we're going to take you out. You're going down. Sophia Stewart has sent me messages where she'll go, um, their, their doctors are going to take you away. Coming up, the FBI is, is going to make a move on you real soon. They love to brag about it. Low-level scum like Sophia Stewart love to brag and feel powerful. That's their whole thing. All eyes on me as their corporation, right? Her thing. Writer, director, producer, all eyes on me. So she needs to feel that power. And so that's why she loves the role of trying to handle me and contact me and say, yeah, they're going to, the FBI is going to take you out now. They're going to take you out. And she's so stupid because I record these things. What an idiot. They're just, they're just not smart at all. And it's all going to come back. All they're doing is creating a library of evidence that's going to reveal them all as one big lump of poop. That's it. They really are. That's that's about as what their worth is. Yeah, Somebody I'll be flushing a toilet. The, the image that they've set up for us to consume is I mean, that's going away very quickly. I agree with you. It's the that. emperor's new clothes. Really, we're seeing there's nothing there. When you look at the actors, really, that have been played in this, like like McCon uh, Matthew McConnell. Whatever his name is, um, big, big, big inside player, just a monster. Here. Oh yeah. God, I, what a monster! And he is. They pick him up at a bar, they give him the job, and he has been in, uh, main guy who said yes, yes, yes. I'll do anything like Keanu Reeves. Give me anything. Give me famous. Make me famous. Make women like me. And he'll do it. He does it. He does whatever they want. And there's no spine in the guy. No spine. Yet they have him play as if he's this really concerned guy. That's one guy I'd never want to meet is Matthew McConaughey or whatever his name is i can't i don't even care about his name but sorry I'm about interested am i showing a double screen here i'm sorry it's okay 
but that's I wanted like, to show the yeah. chat here. Yeah. Just saying hi I'm, to everybody. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just not not interested in meeting that guy ever. Um he was a bar fly. Yeah. But that's what they do, right? They pick the lowest of them all and just elevate them. You know, it's like the, that kind of experiment started back with the monkeys way back. They they created a group because the bet was, I think people know this, they create had a bet from understand to take no talent and make them into pop stars, you know, with younger generation. And it worked. It worked. And I agree, everybody must have some kind of talent, right? So um, worthy experiment, fine. Uh, good laugh. But the thing is that they do that, like you said, their playbook now is to take failed people, elevate them because they have more control over failed people, almost like our economics, those the need, those that have a greater need. Yeah, guess who know? just came back into the spotlight who's a, fa a failed person? Who is that? Take a wild guess. I'd say Sophia Stewart. What no, no, very big, prominent uh hollywood actor <laughs> name and uh his stuff has failed a lot lately we talk about an actor huh yes yes give me the name uh i was gonna give it away first name is Dwayne. show me the rock oh right right they're bringing Johnson. him back that's right that's right they just that's pulled right. him out of they dusted him off of they took him out of the shoe drawer. He's now in talks for the the main event of WrestleMania 40 in two months from now. He has not been on pro wrestling for years. And now lot, here he, yeah. he had that Black Adam movie that I guess just totally tanked. But uh, yeah, yeah. man, oh man, you want to talk about someone that has a power trip? Here's and being Dwayne, yeah. Dwayne Johnson. Well, come on, he he's directly involved with the Maui stuff. He did a little right, video right. with Oprah, asking for donations for everybody to to uh, help rebuild Maui. Yeah, yeah, what? which is and rebuilding nothing, their elite city. Yeah, nothing came of it after that. And right. now he's he's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go fight my my nephew or cousin or what. It, it's just getting too much. But I wanted to point that out. They're bringing yeah. people back out that have. I've not proven themselves currently. Like he's not making that. I don't, I, I'm not watching movies right now, so it's not really affecting me, but I do know that I'm, I'm at a loss for words here. The way that they're making their films and they're pushing them out and they're right. not making any money. Well, they don't he's care having, about the public. Yeah. yeah. He has to like resort back to doing what right. made him a star in the first place, which is live Rehash. audience. Yeah, the yeah. funniest. Okay, we'll move on from this after this. But the That's funniest right. thing with Dwayne, with him returning back to wrestling, is the crowds are not accepting him. So you can have a live crowd boo this guy, and they can pipe in all the cheering they want, like in post. But the, <laughs> it's not happening. Right. The crowd doesn't want The Rock as a main event, and uh, they're aware of that, and they're starting to move the pieces around now. But I do like in like I, I like watching pro wrestling because it's kind of like you have movies and then you have pro wrestling and plus it's live theater in a way. There's a there's a little bit of everything in it, but uh, like the storytelling aspect of it too is really, um, really inspiring to me. I, I, it's the only thing I watch. It's the only yeah. thing. It's like oh that's cool. And it's I know it's hard to find something to watch. I know. I think the people in the chat would understand that too. It's very hard. And um, what's interesting, I've been what you said about Maui, is that if we look at history, um, the cabal repeats history. They want to have what others had in the past that they considered was decadent and the pinnacle of debauchery. And it's like, so what you have is uh, Netflix, which is very much Warner Brothers controlled. You've got the situation where they're showing um, the Roman emperors. They're very big on that. And you have Tiberius. And what happens with Tiberius is he goes to an island, uh, Capri, Capri, and he forms a um, sex island where it's just like uh, the best prostitutes, the best, you know, foods, everything. He distances himself from Rome, the United States, and goes to Capri, Maui, and forms this sex island. And that's exactly what Maui is going to become is um, why are the children missing? Because they will be fodder in that need for the pleasuring 
of the elite. The elite will have an island away from Rome that they will be able to um, have the best of lives with a servitude class. And you destroy the identity of the indigenous people by ruining the historic sites, removing the zoning laws, changing them where you can do whatever you want. Because you can is their answer. When I asked the one Disney attorney why they're doing this, because they can. So Maui is being transformed. And what I knew when I first went there in 2002, the plan was that the elite are invited there. You have a uh, basically a um, what's that island called where the prostitutes were going on? The guy was caught. I uh, somehow blanking on it. The, remember, the guy was hung in prison. What's uh, the, Epstein, all the actors go. Epstein. All the actors went. Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, yeah, Epstein, Epstein Island. So Island Maui is. is going to be an Epstein Island on steroids. That's what it's planning to be. And they're going to curb the laws as they're doing already with the governor, right? To get whatever they want to happen on there. The police chief is a scumbag. He is going to be doing whatever they want. Exactly what happened to us. The police will be working for the elite. And if you are a servitude class on that island, you have no rights. The police will work against you. If you call a complaint in, you'll probably be put in jail even though you call the complaint in because you're bothering the elite. You're complaining about the elite. That's how Robertson did things. That's how the elite does things. That's how the Rockefellers do things. So uh, what they're doing is trying to set up a utopia, a perfect society. That's what actually how this country actually began, uh, this this uh, um, beginnings in the, in the 1600s, 1700s. We were supposed to be, for many groups, a utopia. You know, like even Cromwell's uh, people coming over. It's like, you know, different Puritans, whatever. So that has not died. That dream has not died. And what's going on now is Maui's going to be that utopia. Then they can do whatever they want to the general public. It's almost like, again, Tiberius on Capri with ancient Rome. And you can do whatever you want. Let them tear each other to shreds. And that's part of the plan they have is that we will be, uh, all the senators, congressmen, whatever, will be having a great time away. And we're supposed to tear each other up and they'll instigate that. They'll have their own players, FBI agents acting like homeless people. That's why the immigration thing is so big right now. They want to make that into a almost like an army of disgruntled to uh, distract us, the general population in this country, into uh, throwing our hands up and having to turn to the elite for help. Well, that's exactly what they want. Meanwhile, they're going to have the best of lives on Maui. And believe me, Maui was a paradise. It really was. And when I was being groomed on there, I had the best of a life. I did. I really did. With visited, the honeypot wife. Yeah. In around, uh, I think, 2000, I visited Maui uh, with my mom and uncle. And um, yeah. one of the memories I have from staying um, on the island there, like when we were like leaving or coming back to the condo we were staying at, there were all these like little lizards that like go yeah. like yeah, scurry geckos. around uh, the geckos, geckos. Yeah. yeah and they'd go up and like all over the place they'd be on the ground on the trees and stuff right. and i caught one I, I caught one i wanted to take it home with me oh yeah and my mom's sure. like yeah they're like you can't you can't take that on the plane right. steve but uh they'd had us doing all like the the touristy stuff but right uh, we did a lot of cool things like just experiencing seeing the other islands across the way on the water right right i yeah, can see why the elite want that it, it's right. a prime location to just i mean be away from the rest of the world right what irks me is my money that i'm due is being used to build bill gates kingdom and the rest of them they're they're using my money and Are, that is supposed to be do you helping think they're gonna, and kids do you think they're gonna com complete what gates wants accomplished well, well, yeah, like, they're, they're already trying, but that's where our screenplay comes in play. See, they're trying to make the screenplay a nothing item. Just no one look here when actually it has all the answers. That's why the documentary is so important, right? It actually is all there. And then their side even says this is prophetic. You know, it's like everything from fake old loves, you name it. And it became the thing that changed people's thinking in one of the top 12 films of all time or series. So it's like, of course we have the influence with this thing. So I'm a problem. They call me the fly in the soup. Now they're calling me the Antichrist. It's like they're going to do anything to take people away from and amp it up to get people not to look. And that's what Sophia Stewart's job is also. 
But these kids on Maui, what's going to be happening now is they're thinking that the more time they're separated out of the light of the audiences and people's awareness, the more that they will be able to be transformed into whatever they want to be. And people will forget about them eventually. Let's never forget the children of Maui. And as they age and get older, let's never forget the children of Maui. Just like all these foster kids being taken by child services, where child services is not a uh, federal agency, it's it's a private agency. And it has been uh, commandeered to steal and take uh, children from families that are good for them. And they'll even send their people in and say, oh, we were called in. They don't have to tell you why, who, or what. They just come to your home and just unannounced. And they'll come and they'll say, uh, we had a concern given to us and we just need to check on the child, this kind of stuff. And what they're doing is they'll use that excuse and then uh, try to build a case on you and take the children away from good people. doesn't matter. You don't have a criminal record or anything. They'll just take your children and they'll do it publicly with SWAT teams in the end and everything else to make it look like to your neighbors that you're evil and bad. They can watch, peek through the curtains, feel safer and feel excited and get footage they can put on the air and watch you who are innocent and your children's lives be torn apart. And they've, they've trained people in our public to enjoy this, to see it as eye candy and valuable for them to get footage of. So instead of being concerned for their neighbors, they're profiting off their neighbors' uh, injustices being done to them by yeah. agencies that will come for them next. It's like you wonder, like we pick on Nazi Germany as, you know, I mean, the citizens of Nazi Germany. We pick on the citizens of Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany, yeah, pick on it. But as far as the citizens, German citizens, um, we are the German citizens now. So if anybody's going to say those Germans, like Spielberg does all this thing about, they should dig the ditches and dig the graves, um, get ready to start digging. You're more guilty than the German people. You're more guilty than the World War II people. You are watching these things unfold with your neighbors, with SWAT teams and illegal governance and child services now working with them and psych services working with them. If you're not doing anything, you're worse than the Germans of Nazi Germany. So that's what we need to realize in this country and wake up and realize that's who we are unless we start fighting back. And God bless the convoy. Uh, the one guy, Patriot Kelly, I'm doing a show with him coming up too. Um, love to have you with us on this one. But it's like he's coming up and going to do a special show around the Super Bowl and um, addressing this very issue, very issue. And I'm working with another group that um, deals with child services. So it's like we need to bring this forward and uh, start uh, putting the pressure on the agencies that are causing the problem in our world, in our country. And yeah. they, we need to rip their claws off of it and, and expose them. There should be no celebration of any federal agent that died in service. And I'm going to say this. I, I don't care what flack I get back. Any federal agent working for the FBI and CIA that died infiltrating a person's home and trying to do, I don't celebrate your, I don't honor you. I say you're a coward entering a person's home with all the weapon and body armor and everything else and busting in without warrants, I say, you're a coward. Exactly what happened at Trump's place. Cowards, you're all cowards. You don't deserve honors. And they're really big in making it like they're you know, such great people. And that goes back to Sound of Freedom. What a sham, you know, what yeah, a sham. what happened to it? What happened well, to it's that? now being promoted by Disney on uh, Prime. Prime headlines it now. They whined and cried that Disney pulled the plug on them. No, they were doing that for more publicity. And now, as I said, they're posting it up on must watch along with the other idiocy things they do. And what's interesting is when I was at Pat Robertson's Religious Right, look at the way these things are filmed. They're not real. They're not believable. They use this lighting that's too stark and too um, stoic. It's just it's awful. But they use this very clean lighting. Everything's over makeup, over clean, over lit. And. It's just so they can make the dime and the buck and get the fame and do their interviews. That was the religious right mentality. And now yeah. Sound of Freedom and this uh, Angel Studios, who failed and went bankrupt, are, with the Mormons, doing this whole thing again with bad product on important topics. And they want to, just like the way the mortals was ripped off, they want to be the first to do it so they can say they did it first and then they don't want anybody else to get credit, which is also a religious right tactic. Don't give to any other ministry. 
So you've got this whole thing going where the agencies are totally in bed with the angel studios to make themselves look good. Sound of Freedom is a bunch of garbage. It is not telling us anything true at all. It's telling us anti-information that the agencies want us to believe. That's what people need to realize. We need a real film that actually talks about child trafficking, where this country is the culprit and the agencies are the culprit. I think the agencies are going to support that. And the agencies are actually the ones that took away the immortals because, again, the main character, the Neo character, worked as a lower echelon head of a CIA, CIA department. And Smith is of the CIA in the original Matrix story. And what happens is he then becomes part of Central in the Immortals of Matrix story. And so what happens is you've got the main bad agent is part of the bad organization, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America. Do you, now you know why they're going to rip it off and take it over, right? They had to turn it into something good. And the red pill becomes the blue pill. It reverses. So that's what's going on. So I... The idea that uh, Sound of Freedom did some good? No. They actually launched it when others were going to bring forward the truth about this country. So I Sound of Freedom did not do good. It that. actually it actually blocked the truth coming out, and the agencies had control of that truth coming out, being blocked. So that's really what it is. Sound of Freedom did nothing. And they said that with um, Robertson's organization, that Robertson did some good. They said internally that, yeah, he has affairs. He did all this stuff at the time and did all this cruel stuff. But... He did some good. Well, so did Hitler. And the agencies are trying, now they're trying to say that Sound of Freedom did some good. No, Sound of Freedom actually was a, a badly timed piece of um, PR for the agencies and doesn't help the kids at all because it kind of gives the message, we're doing everything we can. And even yeah. gives their excuse in there that we can't cross the borders. Homeland Security, you can't cross it's the borders. Propaganda. No, Tom, it's all it's propaganda. Prop it's yeah. all garbage. It's if they garbage. wanted to really tell a story about child trafficking, they can do. They can easily pick a dozen different true stories. Yes, do a documentary on yeah. about it. But we're not That's hearing right. about child trafficking stories. We're not hearing about like the TV shows in the '90s, Disney Channel, all these producers that were touching the kids while they were on set mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and all the stuff behind the scenes too. Like it, the list goes on and on. You could have all of this stuff fresh content but they're not making it because it'll incriminate them right exactly exactly and so that's... they put this like all oh, the sound of freedom story it's not like a thousand kids it's what a story about one kid it's a scrubbed that's, version yeah and it makes the excuse that homeland security can't cross the border and that i'm going to rescue your sister and and that you know it goes into california that was brought in it's all lies yeah. basically the way it's formulated it, it, that that somehow U.S. isn't at fault for child. We're the main ones, along with England. So, and they don't want us talking about this. They don't want it being brought up, and they'll call it misinformation. Are you serious? So they've gotten well, as far as they can go. I'll tell you this much: if you go on a, to Instagram or Facebook Meta, you can see some of this child trafficking going on just browsing. And if you do want to see some of, if you have to see it for research purposes make a brand new instagram account mm -hmm. and just go and rant do the random scroll thing and you'll start seeing some very sexually suggestive stuff coming up from preteens okay right, right. it's it's a very big problem and i it think is. i think zuckerberg's gonna end up going and to, to get both well, because of some of the stuff that he's allowing i can't okay so they have all of these like limiters and throttlers on like video sites mm -hmm. on social media sites i assume it's the same way but um i mean, just like the reach of getting this stuff out to people it, it's i've seen other youtubers like they're they're getting strangleholded on their channels they have no yeah. count no views coming right, in right. the uh the rate of <laughs> subscribers are dropping you see the views go backwards that's what we said like but yeah remember that time we had the 20 some thousand and then it went um down to 32 it's like how do you go from 20,000 views which is really amazing because like you said people know our story right they know our story and it's like and we're doing it to try to make a difference we're not we're not called all eyes on us 
you know, we're not that. We're not doing interviews like Sound of Freedom where they get on there and go like, yeah, I, I had, you know, I decided I go rescue this kid. And uh, yeah, it's like, that's not, no, it's not. A, just listen to the tones, listen to what they say. It's all self-promotion. It's all wanting to be stars and popularity. They're still part of that old system where people are coming forward now that actually it's not about us. If the story serves to free the kids, let's use the story. Let's use what they fear most. Let's use whatever they fear most to make the difference. It just happens the screenplay is something they fear most. So yeah. let's make it. And that's something they absolutely do not want to happen. That's why I had umpteen offers to have it um, uh, meshed with um, uh, Cypherman. You know, they want to do a Cypherman blend. Yeah, I'm honored you called me and sent me umpteen messages, but no, it's not going to be blended. And then uh, Sophia Stewart's number one guy, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, Jack, uh, Nicholas Jackson, they call him Nico. He wanted, he kept pushing the same thing with Cypher Man Group to do the blend, to do the blend. You got to do the blend. Ooh. Then he wanted hold to be on, part of it, do the blend. You said Nicholas Jackson? Yeah, Nico, Nicholas Jackson. That's Sophia Stewart's number one guy who was supposed to play me by playing good cop, bad cop with her. I so. can see how all of this can get really confusing because I thought you were saying Jack Nicholson and just said, Oh, no, uh, Nicholas Jack. Dyslexic thing. Yeah, Nico. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. He probably <laughs> oh, has it's that all right. name. It's all right. He probably has that name because of that. But yeah, well, basically, the question that surfaced before about Hollywood actors if you are making it in Hollywood, if you're groomed in Hollywood, you're part of the problem. So it's that's what it is. And then Pat Robertson claimed that if you're successful, God has blessed you. So the Wachowski stealing the work. He would consider them blessed by God. Okay. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Wachowski stole it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, okay. I'm going to try to segue to several things here. Go ahead. Doc, so the chat has a few questions. The documentary is coming along. Um, we are gathering a lot of stuff right now. The so library. We're, yeah. We're still in pre production on a thing, but uh, we do have a tentative shooting date for sometime next month for the bulk of the documentary. Right. So, that's a nice that's a nice update for everybody out there who uh, are keeping up with that stuff. We are on top of that. It's uh st stuff got like moved around for about I think two months. We got delayed because we wanted to start this last month, and then uh, <laughs> everything just kind of been like, hey, oh, I see you want to go spend time with Tom, Steve. How about we just pull your time and just take mm -hmm. it all away from you? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so now I'm like just struggling trying to get everything put together for the end of this month and uh just making sure loose ends are together before uh before we dive all the way into this stuff right and i'm supposed to keep this room empty this like studio room empty so it's ready for when we need to use it as a blank slate so yeah oh yeah i think it's going to be really nice mm -hmm. uh having all that there and then uh it's gonna we're we're gonna be comfortable I think that's going to be the most important thing. We do. Yeah. And we won't be played no longer, no longer being played by all these groups that are claiming to even Nicholas Jackson was claiming to be on board to do stuff. Uh, the guy with Sophia Stewart, they all claimed they were going to work stuff. Then they just run the clock on you. But Rankin did Rankin, the attorney who had on spent. That license. seems like it's something too. like you had a few um, people in the past who seemed to just kind of like string you along just to yeah. make sure that like yeah. you're, they know where you're at. It's like you're at a daycare. It's like, oh, Tom's over here with this group talking to them on this channel. We know where he's at. He's not out going, like, looking for right. Sophia Stewart's. Uh, and they want the copies of all your evidence sent to them. And they set up things online to do it. And they shared um, uh, drop boxes and things like this. They want to see everything you got. I've had so many different groups saying they want to make a documentary. And it was it was rats, all of them. So they were all just playing that game. That shows you how desperate the other side was. And some of these that I did work with, they went three years and then they do a total turnaround. Oh. And you see it go back to Chilton and, and uh, Sophia Stewart, where there's a communicate between them. And it's like, there it goes. Well, we're, so, we're getting close to year two being complete with us here. Surprising that it's been that long at this point. Yeah. Well, this, this feels so good because we can actually do it now. We've got the place. So it's like, this is really, really good to have where it was supposed to be homeless, you know, defeated, isolated, alienated. They're losing that battle. You're on top so, right now, Tom. Yeah. I think you're holding the power here. You're in, um, 
you're in a great place, great state of mind, mm -hmm. great living space, mm -hmm. and you have people around you that you love and that love you. And I think that's well the most said. important thing. Yeah, exactly. Everything's falling into place. You know, who I'm going to walk in life with, everything, which means a lot to Aiden. So it's all falling in a nicely, like a timeline, like God's timeline. It's beautiful. And uh, that was a wake up call he gave me too, to get, you know, really solid with God. You know, and it's like, that's what I need to do. And I always played this. If anybody watched any of my interviews, you'd see me like um, being all things to all people, right? Well, now I'm supposed to really focus and be clear and um, where I stand and what I believe as I go forward. But I'm not supposed to push my beliefs on anyone. I'm supposed to, you know, celebrate their ability to, to believe and celebrate their journey. The most important thing is that they are alive and they are following their journey, their path. I celebrate that. And I will be able to share my beliefs if I'm asked, you know? So, yeah, but I think it's going to be a different Tom, you know, which means I'm ready to go to battle. I'm ready to fight. And there's something new that happened to me too, where I feel sort of aggressive side suddenly awakening in me that I'm glad is there. I knew it was always there. And they always tried to, you know, threaten this kind of stuff or pull you away. No, we're supposed to have an aggressive side. And that aggressive side is going to be used on those that do harm and to bring them down. Also, a, what's interesting is there's a loving side that amplifies in part with that. So even more loving to those that are good and kind while being more aggressive to people like, you know, uh, that actor, Matthew Connolly, whatever. So, yeah, Connolly. So I'm going to I'm going to doggedly reveal these guys for scumbags they are. But anyway, go ahead. There, I was going to mention there's different types of regression or aggression, mm -hmm. <laughs> regression, um, assertiveness is a type of aggression. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, Believe it's me. a positive spin on it. And it's, That's it's right. good. It's healthy. Sometimes this part of their tactic, their tactic is to accuse you that you're dangerous and crazy. It's like, and then you become this mild manner jelly ball. It's like, no, I am not dangerous and crazy. They are. They certainly are. And if I called my company all eyes on me, yeah, they'd have something to go on. It sounds like a narcissist, right? So, but it's their accusers that have that company called that. And it was really interesting that we looked in the, um, those that were claiming besides Tom Hanks and Wendy Wasser's team, the Immortals title, you know, it's just really just blow away. It still blows me away. I can't wait to capsulize that in the documentary. But you also see that item where the um, they put all the groups they wanted to claim, lay claim to the immortals after Bonham and Jurisset was revolutionary. We were making this, right, before he gave it to Joel Silver, too, and all these other studios. And uh, keep in mind that Bonham and Jura fished it out everywhere. When Joel Silver said he bought it with his spec money, they also were divvying it out to other studios. All the studios got greedy, basically, and all wanted. That's why all of these multiple copyright on the title Immortals. But one of them actually has a, um, a film called uh, All Eyes on Me. So, yeah, it's interesting. So it looks like Sophia Stewart liked in the session of ripoff when she was brought up with other failed people that she liked that and employed it for a company. But I'm blown away that she was actually a witch in Manhattan. And her own sidekick, Nicholas Jackson, says that, yeah, she was a witch for Warner Brothers brought in house. She put curses on people out of Manhattan. That was her beginning job out of the projects. Wow, great. Talk about picking the dregs of the barrel. And so she then gets employed by Warner Brothers out of USC as a witch, practicing witch. And Nicholas Jackson sent me a text on this saying, yeah, that's it. That's what she is. And by um, the way, yeah. if, if the audience is starting to laugh because we're talking about witches, it's because Hollywood has trained you to laugh at magic and wizardry and witchcraft. They, they, they made the Harry Potter. Yeah. They, they whitewashed the whole thing to make you think it's fantasy. But there's people that practice this stuff with books and chants and candles and pentagrams and everything. It's real people. It's out there. It's eyes and, wide shut. Eyes wide shut. They're doing yeah. it. They're actually doing this. And hey. whether it works or not, who knows? I'm not saying that they can cast a spell. It's going to affect me. What I'm saying is they believe they're witches and yeah. they do yeah, so practice this to make money. So, yeah. So there's, there's, there's ones I think like what we're saying is Sophia Stewart can claim she's a witch but does she have the power to, to do the things that she claims I don't I'm, know. I'm still breathing 
So, yeah. I mean, you imagine how many curses she tried to put on me. So I think it's, it's, you know, these how many voodoo dolls do you think? Yeah. That, how I, many voodoo dolls named Tom do you think she has? <laughs> you know, what's so funny is that's so such a cool statement because Pat Robertson's group claim, you know, they claimed that you're them. Like they put the darkness on you. They claimed that I was saying that my family, people were putting voodoo dolls, stabbing with voodoo dolls. It's like, no, I never said that, but that's Pat Robertson's psyche saying that. So it's interesting that they actually are focused on that stuff. It's about power for them. So they look for dark arts as power. Are they practicing it? I think they're about as successful as Game of Thrones, where the one guy says, uh, the heavy guy, Tully, says, you know, I, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a wizard, which is he's adorable when he says it. And we're supposed to adore him and think, what a great guy, what a cute guy, you know, as as a person. Yeah, and it's it's now accepted kind of like a Oh, I want to be Batman or Superman. Like it's <laughs> yeah. the same concept. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be a wizard. Oh, you watched Harry Potter, right. didn't you? Yeah. You silly little kid. Now at ah. the same time, you're right. Yeah. At the same time, there are dark forces. We've seen this. We've experienced this. I think many in the audience have seen this too. So there are dark forces. Yes, they do have a power, but it's a limited power. And we play a part in that if it has a power over us. When we're in our design and way we're supposed to be, I think that also comes with a natural defense shield around us. When we're in our zone, who we are supposed to be designed to be, that comes with a protection plan. I really believe that, that we can do the work we're designed to do. And it goes back to God again. So I think a lot of people work themselves up over demons, demons, demons. I saw that religious right there. They think demons are under every bed. They think demons surround everybody. They're so obsessed with themselves and their own selves that they, they get this paranoia about demons. If you want to see paranoid people, it's Pat Robertson's group that's paranoid. You know, they're the ones. And Joel Silver, he goes to sleep with a magnum in his, under his bed pillow <laughs> and in his drawer in his office. I, yeah. They're the paranoid ones, right? Yet they accuse us of having guns, waving, waving guns around. No, they're the ones waving guns around. So they try to deflect it our way. So as far as the witch stuff and everything like that, yes, they believe they are practicing witches. It makes them feel very, very important. And think of it, it serves their need to feel like they can put a curse on others. Now, Sophia Stewart's own site does say that she's putting a curse on the others that she claimed took Terminator and stuff, but her work has nothing to do with Terminator. But she's actually loving it, going back to her old school Manhattan projects and still doing it. So yes, she believes she has Sophia that Stewart, power. yeah, Sophia Stewart's story is completely unrelated to Tom's script or the Wachowskis or yeah, anything completely. else that she claims. There's a lot of stuff that can be refuted, if not everything can be refuted. From, well, that's the thing. Uh, if you're going to play, if you're going to plagiarize something, you know, uh, let's say you're in college, and you're going to write a paper, and you're going to plagiarize to get a good grade. Okay, not advised. Would you pick Star Wars in the Bible? That's what she did, Star Wars in the Bible. So she's plagiarizing Star Wars in the Bible. It, that's not Terminator. That's not Immortals. That's not Matrix. It's, it's nothing. True. Yeah, it's a bunch of... That's nothing. Smorgasbord of stuff. All she does is rename the characters and try to make it an African-American tale. So she's making a uh, Bible and Star Wars into an African-American tale. So it's a woke project. That's what it is. All right, we're going to shift gears here. Speaking hmm. of renaming... And stealing work, we have. Uh, I well, I found some new info, okay. And I've shared this with Tom already, but uh, I'm going into more detail here, so I'm going to share my screen. But I was doing some digging on IMDb the other day because I'm going through over, I think it, we're close to 2,000 VHS tapes here for the eBay store. Mm -hmm. But I'm going through all of these tapes and I'm going on IMDb looking up names and actors and everything. And wouldn't you know, I came across a TV show from 1993 called Matrix. Wow. And that's not all. Not only is the main character's name Steven mm -hmm. Matrix, but also one of the stars is none other than Carrie Ann Moss. Mm-hmm. Who plays Trinity in The Matrix. Mm-hmm. And yeah. is also now being listed as one of the writers of The Matrix. So what you have, Stephen, is 
all of them, including Fishburne, Reeves, all the rest are being credited now as being writers because they were making it up on set as they went along and the and the actors had to improvise on set. Their, their attorney said there was no working drafts whatsoever. So now you see they want credit for making up and improvising. So now they're all, it's like they're all going to be listed as writers now. Isn't that something? Yeah. Because they had to make it up as they went along. So, yeah, there's, there's so many things here, but Ultimately, I think that Carrie Ann Moss suggested mm -hmm. this title mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. a previous project that mm -hmm. she worked on. Like, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? Let's the call Wachowskis it Matrix. Were holding, the Wachowskis were holding Tom's immortal script right. in hand. And Carrie Ann Moss is like, call it The Matrix. Don't call it The Immortals. That's right. They did not pick any of the titles. Perfect, Stephen. They didn't pick any of the titles off the uh, ones that were entered, those 246 titles that were entered for Studios to Steal, they didn't. They were mad about um, Assassins being uh, another writer being brought in. So they, they're going to go against it and uproot the studios and I do want, this. And you're right. So like, Carrie Ann suggested take a look this. At this poster, too. Just, mm. yeah, I want everybody to just take a look at this poster and the two actors that are on it look like Keanu Reeves. And Hugo Weaving, or AKA Neo and Smith. Mm -hmm. The tie, and even, the dark shirt. They yeah, put the, the devil horns on the Smith character. And they put the tail on the tie. Like this is very crude mock up of the poster, but it's this a is B what's on. movie. Yeah. yeah. So also, here's another kick uh, kicker with this. There's two episodes out of ten available. Yeah. yeah. Meaning. Internet Archive is the only place that has these two episodes, and I can't find the show anywhere else. And, and I wanted, I, yeah, I wanted to go and sit down, and watch the whole thing, pick out matchups, and be like, "Here you go, like here's all." But there's, and, it's yeah. hard to find, which means it tells me there's something in there that connects more of your script to their bullshit. 1993 is when we submitted. 1993 is also um, when the Wachowskis claim that sometime in 1993 they came up with it. So it's like they, but they they had no working drafts, no scripts. And um, yeah. Yeah. So if everybody's still not convinced that Carrie Ann Moss had some play in this, mm -hmm. please keep in mind what Tom has mentioned before that Nolan, Christopher Nolan, also was given the green light to rip off Tom's script, the immortal. But it was sent to Universal. Yeah, it was sent directly to Universal. So six years after this with Carrie Ann Moss, look at where Carrie Ann Moss goes to next. Goes to Christopher Nolan with his first film, Memento. There you go. And it's released in 2000, a year after Matrix. And it has Joe Pantoliano in here too, the one that played Cypher. Oh my God. You have a double whammy. There is his face. You have double whammy, two Matrix actors in this film, and it's the first film by Nolan, his first feature film. You can't wow. get any more double whammy like out of wow. the park than that. Wow. Yeah. Because Nolan's just the, he is the thorn in my side. The Library of Memories, the yeah. little girl. That's where the other, the other parts of your script ended up is in Nolan's. Report. That's right. The no. best scene, Carrie Ann Moss saw the best scene, which was the little girl has aged, uh, Neo has not, and he goes back to her. And then we've got that in uh, Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, where they do the exact same thing. It's incredible. So he actually uses up the best scene that was not in the Matrix. You can see Carrie Ann going like, let's use this scene, let's do this scene. And so she does it that way. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You, you got to... You gotta think about this like the title of the tv series is named matrix mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there's no wachowski mm -hmm. warner brothers attachment to this it was that's made a very good point it was made in australia of all places that's a who's, very good point who's to say that carrie ann moss wasn't one of those behind the scenes players to make this rip off happen exactly w activated right in 1993 when it's submitted to Bonham and Schur, to Joel Silver and Bonham Schur saying it's revolutionary we're making this. I'll bring yeah. it up one more time. So they were going to save her career and his career. And the, the 
the log or the summary of this plot, it's basically describing like Neo waking up in the train station. Because here, no. they, listen to the here. I'll I'll do the read all. Steven Matrix is one of the underworld's foremost hitmen until his luck runs out and someone puts a contract out on him. Shot in the forehead by a twenty-two pistol, Matrix dies and finds himself in the city in between. Oh my god. What are we doing? Oh you know my how, god. You know that's that's right from the immortals. So explain explain to us how how that's from the immortals. That and that's Trinity's character. That's Carrie Ann Moss character that gets him out of the st- train station between the worlds that's just unbelievable yeah, it says in each episode matrix meets a new guide from the world beyond he's given a new assignment much in the manner of an unwilling guardian angel so carrie ann moss probably carrie ann playing moss. that role that's what she was in the immortals that Boy. role unbelievable well, oh there's my nothing. god it's a yeah they're not showing page. it page this... she's protecting herself she's protecting herself from getting caught when something's this bare bones like this for something that's connected to one of the most well-known franchises out there, you know something's up. That's incredible find. Look at that. Look at the timing. So she's one of the ones that pushed it through. Probably Kate Chilton brought her in and said, help us facilitate this. And she ate up with a spoon. They were saving her career and Keanu Reeves' career. I think it might have been this guy I was looking up. There's like some actors that were connected to this that led me to looking at this, but it was it was very um, revealing for me. That's gonna be very very. My good mind for the started going. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. good for the documentary. They they're wondering how we get all this stuff figured out and how you find this stuff. I know they're. I've seen this before, even with Robertson's group when he's working with the Cabal. It's like they they get upset. Like, how did you learn this? How do you know this? And um, sometimes I just go, "Well, there's a God." You know, it's about justice. And he, he yeah, does care about the, the kids. Yeah, some of the unexplainable things. Yeah. I mean, just it, it's convenient to say that, yes, it, like it was because of God. But how, uh, else yeah. can you, how can you explain it otherwise? That's what I believe. I believe we're going to enter a time here where these people that, like back to the witches topic, because that's a, that's a hot topic, right? It's like they're going to find out they really don't have any power. They're, they're, it's like a narcissist really realizing that not everybody thinks they're superior. It's devastating to them. I think Sophia Stewart and others are going to realize they have no power whatsoever. And they're not thinking clearly because the studios say this, even in films, they'll say there's not a ripoff of mine done by a Russian company. Uh, um, better than, better than that, better than us is the thing, which is just our thing all through it with the Neuralink and everything. Anyway, oh, I re- yeah, I remember. Yeah, that yeah, that's that. that's a big rip up of ours that they farmed to Russia, and um, what you'll see again that idea of that the internationalities are all working together for the cabal, which is in the Immortals. But you're going to see that um, they they say in that show that when we make you, we can break you. If we made you, we can break you, and that's what Sophia Stewart needs to realize is that they made her. She was a nothing, a nothing. Wachowskis were nothings. And uh, it's it's almost like the three amigos. They got no power over the studios, and they can be replaced like this. Oh so, man! Yeah, yeah. What the? I think the production company of that better than us is called Sputnik. Oh my god! It just well it's that hard. that was such a ripoff, man. such a ripoff that they did. They do it through foreign studios, right? Just like they're doing in Australia. So that was such a ripoff where they had the whole thing where. She's programmed with the memories to take him out and this kind of stuff. And then she she's not going to. And then she takes the other guy instead. My best scenes are in this movie. And they just they just stuck it together. Now, the Russian studio company did a good job with the um, um, graphics and the production qualities. They did a good job. Yeah, so, it, looks real, yeah. it looks nice. I very think smooth, say that. very slick. But it's our stuff all through it. Our stuff all through it. So they farm it that way. Remember, all these studio companies want to do a take on the work. It makes and that's sense exactly too. what defendants do. Yeah, yeah. Look at Disney Star Wars, for example. I can comfortably say that from what I've seen of it, that it is beautifully shot. The post-production on 
the films, if you want to even call them that at this point, the post production is top notch. Like it is right. so polished. It looks phenomenal, but there's no soul. There's no story. The actors don't have anything to work off of. Right. That, was, that was obvious when they switched to green screens and blue screens. They didn't have anything to work off of, so everything ended up being flatter than it could have been. Exactly. The the actor in this one here, too, reminds me of the guy from um, the uh, sex trafficking movie, Sound of Freedom. Oh, yeah. So it's like, yeah, anyway. But anyway, that look they're going for. They're trying to go for the rugged look, you know. Yeah, the, anyway. no, the Nord. Yeah. Stereotype. But that there it is right there. Because in our the immortals, uh the girl is reprogrammed, her memories erased by the Smith agent, and then she realizes something that she's she still uh protects him at the crucial moment and when she's supposed to take him out. It's the best one of the best things from the immortals, and they stuck it in this totally completely. There's a little girl. Yep, there's a little girl. Ha <laughs> Sophia. Did you see that? Yeah. Hi, Sophia. <laughs> Oh my God! Now I think that's what later sometime we'll get into the Star Trek thing, like the 2017 Star Trek oh, thing. Oh yeah, we're gonna great. have to we're gonna have to break down Star Trek into darkness. Yes, somehow. I think next time let's break it down because they they got it. People need to see this, and we need to put it on record. And um, I've uh, been Daniel avoiding watching saying, that one. I've seen the first one. The first one was nice, so I I could share another personal story if you don't mind. Go ahead, please. When um the lost creator whatever the heck his name is the prodigy of spielberg whatever his name is he made the the start he rebooted at he's bad reboot it, the the company's name is bad robot but people call him oh bad right Re right right they they call him bad reboot though oh. because everything he does is a reboot and he never finishes the project he usually just does the first episode or gets it launched and then leaves I'm blanking on his name, but anyways, uh, what what was the re so the the marketing leading up to Star Trek, right? Oh, oh so good, just so good because you're seeing like the dystopian future in the desert, and it's not too far distant future. It's like believe the whole thing is like it needs to be believable, and some of this stuff like they they know how to make they know how to hook you in, right. But then it's kind of like okay, they got you to where they, they got you your butt in the theater seat. Then they cut corners. Yeah, and that's about yeah, it. That's exactly it. And then do these repeats of all these different, uh, uh, what they think is cool. So and I watched. It's just, yeah, I, I did watch that first film that he rebooted. I thought it was okay. My grandpa didn't think so. He's a big Star Trek fan, and he's like, "Why? Why is Uhura and so and so like kissing in the elevator? Because it yeah. didn't make sense to the story." Right. But I didn't watch Into Darkness, and now you're finding all of these, um, all these. <laughs> oh, wait, you see. Ripoffs. Yeah, based. wait, you see. Uh, that, I think maybe it was meant to be that it's for next time because I didn't get a chance to send you all these. But wait, you see, just what it is. And then, oh of well, course... today, today mm. was very much about um, just getting caught up in general, mm. and also this was yes, the that main thing crucial. I wanted to point out. Yes, and short circuiting their plans for Maui. Um, he, they yes. want us to forget about Maui right now. They think that the attention span of audiences is just they actually have it mapped out to a certain you know so many days, months. So they think we're going to forget about Maui now, but we're not going to forget about Maui. And we know those children are there, and they're going to be set aside. And they think that time will pass that we will forget about them. We're not going to forget about the children. Not going to forget about the children. So we know what the plan is, and that's what I'm spelling out. I was part of the plan when they formulated this plan, and that plan is to make that pleasure island. So they're going to make that Capri of ancient Rome. They're going to make that um, island where the kids are exploited, which I, I keep blanking on the name. It's too emotional for me. So the name of whatever his name is. The, who, the app I can't. I, you think that'd be so easy to remember? Too emotional. I blank it out. I blank it out. So it's almost like it is. I uh, it's it's planned almost. Mm -hmm. The January sixth stuff. CIA operative's name Ray Epps, and then you have this island thing, 
Jeffrey Epstein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like that Epps is the similarity there, but both CIA players. I mean, they they have to be. The guy saying go to the Capitol, and then also the the guy that was partying with every Hollywood star and probably had dirt on everyone. I think that was the whole purpose of having that thing. That's something for people to be realizing too, as things circulate here, is that the CIA and the FBI feel they have all the toys, all the power. They can make any excuse they want to take out any citizen they want. The question arises, well, why don't they take you out, Tom? Why don't they take you out, you know, Stephen? The reason is because we have so much information out there. They are paranoid. They are cowards. And they don't want to get caught in the end where the populace says defund them, where Congress actually gets oversight back over them, where Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, the lifelong FBI operative, is removed from position, where they have no oversight, uh, control of oversight. So they know their days are numbered. But meanwhile, those of us that are not on the air are being removed. They are being taken out. You don't hear their cries. You don't hear their voices. And they're trying to chop away at everything that basically uh, what Caligula did, again, in the Roman Empire. They're big on the Roman Empire. This country is founded on the Roman Empire uh, style, even our buildings in Washington, D.C., Roman Empire. What they did was they had treason trials, right? And Caligula, Tiberius had it, Caligula had it. And Netflix talks about this in length. And so Caligula uh, eliminated all his enemies. That's what the agencies are doing. They are going after their enemies. They even say, let's put it again. They say, we only go after those that go after us. Well, they're so paranoid, those that are in the agencies, that they think you're after them, then you're going down. That's what Caligula did. We're talking about madness in the agencies, absolutely madness. And that's why they accuse us of being mad. But they're going after anything they think is a threat. Well, if they're not brought, reeled in and put on the leash and put in the doghouse and put down, basically, they're going to eliminate everybody. They're never going to stop in this world. You're talking about paranoid individuals that should be put away on 302s. The SWAT teams should be putting themselves away, put the guns on themselves and put themselves away. They're the ones that are crazy. They're the ones that are insane. They're the ones that are doing what the ancient Roman empires did. Oh, Rempers. You know, just following orders. That's their excuse in the end. But do you think they don't get off on their power trip when they say it's all about power and they're working for the cabal and the entertainment industry? And then they'll make the excuse. And, the, and sound of freedom is one big excuse for the agencies. It's what it is. Where the children are not being helped. And it makes people think that it's getting taken care of. That's the purpose also. I had said before, long before, there was a statement I got to make where um, watch for the agencies to save maybe one or 20 kids, do a big publicity on it, and it'll make them look like the good guys. They're not going to – they know where all these kids are, but they'll save maybe 20 or make it look like they're saving 20, right? Which uh, Caligula did also when he claimed to have invaded Britain. He had his own legionnaire soldiers picked out that looked like Celts mostly and paraded them back in a triumph as if he had conquered Britain. He never even stepped foot. He used his own guys. So what you have is um, these kids, uh, did, they did that. Through Sound of Freedom, they made it look like they're rescuing some kids. They didn't do 20. They make they won. They're such cheapskates. It's like I thought they would maybe have one to 20. You know, like, and make a big deal out of that. But they'll still continue to do that. You'll still see in response to our interviews and things like this, because they say that everybody's watching it. Roseanne just contacted again. Roseanne Barr just contacted me on uh, my phone just the other day, last night or two nights ago. So, so she made there, a, she, said, she made a follow-up contact. Yeah, she made a follow-up last contact. Night. Right, nice. while she's working with Trump. So it's happening. It's happening. So there's, a, there's an underground. You and I are part of the underground in the view of Hollywood. So we're underground, just like the film Immortals. So you're like, you're like Morpheus. You're, you're Alan Grace. So, yeah. I want to give my Morpheus glasses now. Yeah. So <laughs> you want to give me eyes, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But what's funny is, if, if oh. audience can understand this, they're actually intrigued by the story. Now think of this. Their attorneys say that the real life story is bigger than the Matrix, right? So they're intrigued by us that they said they put us in our own story. So they don't want to cut the series. It's it's crazy. They don't want to cut the series. Yeah, it's it's wild. So so they can't one of the reasons why they're not touching us now is they don't want to cancel this show. 
that they feel they put us in. So we're stars in the biggest show ever, according to their attorneys on tape. Can you believe that? So we're alive because we're in the Truman Show. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Give me a second. Okay. Isn't that wild though? We're, we're that's that's one of the reasons we're alive and not being hauled out of our homes right now is and that's the answer <laughs> so yeah because their their attorneys will call and so you're, you're in the Truman show you're this you know you, we are fans of your work then just do the right thing just do the right thing your screen's going all over the place are you getting interrupted yeah, give me a second. I'm looking for something here. Don't you worry. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you, Becky, for the comment. I see the comments now, so that's really sweet. All right, give me one moment. No problem. I'm looking forward to meeting all the different people that actually stayed with all this and we're supporting and just like, you know, could see through everything with critical thinking. I am looking forward to a celebration where I get to meet all, all, all of us together. That's going to be so good and realize that we did it, you know, that we saw it through. The agencies never thought it could happen. Their playbook said it wasn't a possibility. And that's going to be amazing to see people look them in the eye that you feel honor toward and appreciate. And we can say, I'm really glad I got to meet you in this timeline, in this world that the other side failed. There'll be a lot of people that were targeted that, that because we all spoke up, we're able to stand together in the end and, and see kids freed. And that's another image I'm looking forward to is kids being freed and having their stories told. And that's, what's going to sink these agents and uh, these Hollywood moguls and things like this is the kids actually getting to tell their stories. It'll be as impactful as the concentration camp releases when they finally open the doors to concentration camps at Dachau and these other places, Auschwitz. We're going to have kids telling their story. And some of these kids are going to be grown, ki grown people. And they're going to recount what happened. And I'm going to be very teary-eyed, uh, very emotional over the them you know, saying that they were waiting for someone to actually do an actual sound of freedom, to actually come and find them, not to gloss it over and excuse the perpetrators. I couldn't imagine being one of these children hearing that those they've seen do these horrible crimes to them and others around them are being lauded in a film. That's, that, that's going to be a great day when that turns around. And these scumbags are actually behind bars in front of tribunals. Yeah, they even put a face to these monsters and trying to make them out like they're heroes, like they're tr like they're troubled heroes, that type of like. Yes, on. which is how Neo is in the Immortals. So they see that as a more endearing quality, you know, <clears throat> we're, like how they like try to endear it up a notch. And um, if you look at televangelists, which are very much part of the cabal, <clears throat> a lot of these televangelists, obviously, <clears throat> uh, groomed and allowed to have its airtime and everything, they're, a lot of times they pick names to endear themselves to the female segment of population. They'll have Jimmy Baker, Jimmy Swigert, Benny things. That's like you're Stevie and I'm Tommy. Yeah, It's supposed to appeal to the female side of their demographics they're trying to profit off of. And so watch for this kind of stuff, how watch in Sound of Freedom in the interviews, especially with these guys, discern who they are, how they're presenting themselves, if they want attention on themselves, if they're actually concerned about the kids. Look at how they present themselves and you'll get a clear sight of what's bad, what's good. And um, these guys reveal themselves clearly. If we just take a look with that understanding, getting by the snowball thing. So, yeah. yeah. You ready for what I was looking for? Go ahead, Stephen. There you go. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Do you know why they use sunglasses in the Matrix and trench coats? Do you know why? 
Why? Because in the immortals, if an agent looks at you and sees your eyes and stuff, they can get a total readout of who you are immediately with their brain enhancer. So that's why they stuck the glasses on them in the matrix. Really? So the it was like, oh <clears throat> no, the they're gonna they're gonna read my mind. Hold on. Well, they'll they'll have a visual readout of who you were. Yeah, there you go. But that was a the idea, readout. right? Yeah. Because they don't talk about why they wear sunglasses. They don't talk about anything. Yeah, they don't. They'll put it on their face. They were just like, like Steve, we got Morpheus Matrix glasses for you. They're replicas. You can buy them for about 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. They still work. I've used these in multiple like uh spoofs of Matrix stuff I've done. Yeah, before. yeah. That's great. Does, these are my morph <laughs> these are legit Morpheus replica glasses. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. They never explain, I love it, why they are lifting the things. They just lift them because they think it's going to be cool, right? And that's what they said, it's going to be cool. They don't explain what it comes from. It comes from the original story. So now you know why they wear glasses because otherwise the enhancer will have a readout. An agent will be able to see you in a crowd and just read you out with face recognition. There you go. But they never explain it. Why not explain that? Because they don't get it. Yeah. Isn't that some? This is so silly, Todd. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Make a choice. I know. Make seriously. <clears throat> Red pill, blue pill again. Yeah. Why? Right. Why? In the original work, they just offer the red pill. That's it. You take it or your family and you die. That's it. There is no choice. And the Cabal doesn't give a choice. But the Wachowskis want to mix in Alice in Wonderland. So that's why you have the eat me, drink me. Once we dissect all this and put it forward, audiences are going to go, now I get it. And hopefully people will realize they were ripped off from the original work. And that Hollywood is screaming through Sophia Stewart and others, don't make the original work. You can't. That's what she screams to me on a phone call. Why is Sophia Stewart calling me? Why is she screaming not to make the work? Why is she threatening an injunction is going to be on it? Why is she taunting saying no one's going to come see it? I think everybody's going to come see it. Love her or hate it. They'll want to know if there's matchups. They'll want to see what it originally, what it meant. They'll, even if they hate us, they'll want to see if they can throw something at us. So, you know, and those that care will watch also. So uh, it's the opposite. But they are desperately afraid is what they're cl cluing in. So, yeah. yeah I'm waiting for the time they use. Yeah. When they use Keanu Reeves directly on me, that's going to be the ultimate desperation. When you see Keanu Reeves go, there's this guy named Tom Althouse who's not worth mentioning and uh, Stephen Yesel. And you're going to learn these guys are just complete wannabes looking for clickbait. And they're going to be creating content. Nobody even cares about their story, but they keep going because they're obsessed. Anything to darken it, right? And I just gave you some of the things they throw. So they're going to bring out him and somebody else to try to throw something at us because they're that desperate. Sophia Stewart's just not cutting it. Just not cutting it. Yet they're doing that total PR thing for her now. So watch them squirm, watch them wiggle. And uh, oh, yeah, Netflix made a deal with um, TKO Group which now owns UFC and WWE. So that's a big deal um, in terms of streaming, just to keep an eye on that for the time being. These sure. deals could go for six months, a year, two years. They flip-flop a lot. That's why these streaming services say, hey, like this movie's no longer going to be on our platform. It's going, they don't say where it's going, but the licenses are changing. <clears throat> And then you got people having like a do uh, dozen streaming services and how do you have time to watch all of them? And um, I mean, that's why I'm always with, with physical media. The streaming service is just another way to have them make a quick buck. They're not making 30 bucks a movie anymore like they were off these VHS tapes. But, right, um, right. I think it's really it's, it's the streaming stuff. Try to avoid it as much as you can. If you have to watch something, um, dig into your list of recommendations from your friends, or if something you really want to research, do it that way. I've just given general advice to, to everybody watching here with us because um, and it's easy to to use your your free time up watching entertainment, but if it's strategized, if you have a way where it's like you want to learn something today or you need to catch up on a certain just just be like strategic with your itemized goals 
and I think you'll be all right in terms mm -hmm. of in the terms of not being distracted too much with with the world. Because I'm well, really trying to take a step back from everything. I just glance at Twitter maybe once a day just to update myself with what's going on. And then I continue doing my own work here. And I, right, I right. tune everything that's, else out. That's another good point, too, that those of us, what we need to do so we don't get washed in their flooding of misinformation is that we each stick to what we specialize in. We stick to our stories in that way that will cave them in, that will surround them and crush their whole strategy. So we keep focusing on what we know. We keep heading at home, telling what we know that they're afraid of. And then other people focus in on what they know uh, with child services and agencies and things like that to crush in that way. <clears throat> so each of us should be focusing on what we're experts at and sticking to it. So yeah, anyway. I got a great... <clears throat> A great comparison here. Mm. So, you know, uh, I'm going to bring it back to wrestling again. You remember Hulk Hogan and oh, yeah. Macho Man? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there was a time when they decided they were going to team up for the first time after being enemies. But uh, I kind of, <laughs> I'd say we are similar in, a, in the sense that, like, we are teaming up. Not that we were enemies, <laughs> but this handshake <laughs> is the beginning of the Mega Powers. That's their tag team name. That's and awesome. it's like such a big deal they made out of it. Like, oh yeah. my God, I feel the energy in your hands and all that. So yeah. uh, we are we are the Mega Powers of, uh, of Hollywood here. Just we're going to go through. We're going to take the titles. We're going to be a rating undisputed. Yeah, champions. I'd love it. <laughs> That's the funny thing. We were groomed to be the top. And they bring in minions to take us on because the minions they try to control. Chip away. They're nipping yeah. away at our mm. heels. That's right. all they're doing. That's right. And then shadow banning. So it's like they groom you and tell you that you're the top. So what, what changed? We haven't changed ourselves. So no. And then to placate the minions that failed, they give them, allow them to have companies like All Eyes on Me. They, you know, they tell them they're going to be stars. So what's going to happen is in the end of all this too, um, the Hollywood moguls will be no longer part of the picture. It'll be us making our own films. All of us that are the talents that were spotted. And that's going to be a nice time where we'll all be this camaraderie of different studios, of different talents that don't have movie moguls, that don't have F, like D players, will actually be a community of artists creating great content uninhibited or uninfluenced by a uh, mega conglomerate that owns all these different disciplines and uh, feels that they have to make sure their presence known to keep uh, position. So Disney's going to have a big change too. It won't be Disney anymore. We're going to see um, many different isolated independent studios that will be, uh, talent-based, creative-based, they'll be out of that creativity and it'll simply be a vehicle to launch that creativity into actual films. So it's going to be good. It'll be very good. And uh, we're about to enter a time too where films are going to be a whole different thing, you know, where the audience will go in and have a surround environment where they'll see the film, like they're in the, they're in the story. They're almost on the ground of a story, like a virtual reality where you're, you just go, you're look, you're in that world. Something really cool that I think you would like to, but there's there's a future ahead of us where live theater can be enjoyed with a headset VR. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in in the theater, enhancing what's already there. So like the actors would still be walking around and doing stuff, but you'll see the the scenery change and stuff. So that right. that's like the type of cool stuff I'd like to see, but that's not what. Like Musk and all of them are pushing. They they want to totally <laughs> no. They're still on their agenda, right? They want to shut your brain off if you think wrong. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. They all right. all all you're questioning the, the narrative. Zap zap zap. zap. Right, we'll like break that's you. what they're. We'll destroy do. you. Yeah, that's it. So it kills me that Elon Musk never created Neuralink, not because I was given it to create, but because he didn't even patent it. So they, he did nothing. He did nothing. He acquired steel work. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. to, to save himself. He's, an, he's a deep player. Yet again, taking a deep player and making him as if he's the greatest thing on the planet and overkill of PR, public you know, PR being done on him. So, yeah. But he's, he's a complete moron. So yeah, it'd be nice school. to get the, yeah, it'd be nice to return to those that actually think and create. And I look forward to meeting people like that, um, all of us together when this is done. So thanks, Steve. Cool. Yeah, th- thank you, Tom. Again, I mean, it's, this is really always a pleasure having you on. And I know we see we say first Saturday, uh, it didn't happen again this month, um, but. We, We'll see uh, next month. Let's just look right now. Okay. I, I am not going to be in town on March 2nd. All right. That's three weeks from now. So let's just make it four weeks from now. So okay. March 9th. I'll put it on the calendar. If it doesn't work, we'll change it. But that'll Sounds be the, good. It'll be the tentative date for us. All right. Very good, Stephen. But yeah, I think we covered a lot today. We needed to get th- this little uh the matrix 93 the matrix 99 thing is extremely important the maui call is very very important the sound of freedom thing which was organically a popping up is very important to realize that is an agency's uh psyop tool so it's like it's very important for us to realize these things and there's a lot that the other side is not going to be happy about in the content of today so i would be surprised yeah yeah, there's there's a lot for sure tom they're they're anywhere they jump (laughs) into this interview they're gonna be like oh crap no, Carrie Moss is gonna <laughs> Carrie Moss is gonna be losing it. She's gonna be like throwing furniture around. I'm anyway. on to you, Carrie. Yeah. I'm on to you. Yeah, what a cheap <laughs> shot, babe. All right, thanks, Stephen. Good job. All right, Tom. You have a good weekend. You too. And um, yeah, until next time. Thanks, Tom.